And welcome back to the Murdy Creative Co. Podcast. I'm your host, Colin Murdy, and today's topic is business as the good guy. But first, I want to say thank you to everyone who supported the company. So far, if you haven't got a chance, go check us out on the web at murdycreative.co. That's M-U-R-D-Y creative.co. Or you can check us out on Facebook and Instagram by searching at murdycreative.co to see the best of our product shots. Follow us to keep up to date with our daily photos and be the first one to know about our new product launches. You can also use the subscribe button at the bottom of our website to be included on all of our new product announcements. Be sure to check out our laser engraving, personalization options, and exclusive colors on the website, or you can get a blank one on Amazon Prime. All right, so there's been a lot of times over the course of the last couple of months that I've thought to myself, ooh, I should really podcast on that topic, and I obviously haven't because I hadn't podcasted over the course of the last few months. And so this is a topic that really, it, it harkens back a little bit to something that kind of was going on, that things that were going on during the coronavirus and, and kind of that original early time. But at the same time, it, it's it's kind of a perennial problem, and actually it's something that is a much larger problem. And... It was some, and so it's almost something I want to talk about because I think it really affects people, and, and particularly those who are interested in business and economics and starting businesses and what that means. Um, this is a problem you're going to have to deal with a little bit as you get as you get moving. So, one of the things I noticed when we were beginning to do some of the announcements with the CARES Act, right, with the payment protection or payroll protection. Um, plan or something like that they were it was the ppp and it was this specific program that was going to be helping cash flow some of the businesses who obviously were being shut down by the government because when you're shut down you don't have any you know funding you can't you can't operate and if you can't operate you don't have a way to pay your employees and the government didn't want people to have you know not pay their employees and you know you know as a more middle of the road libertarian kind of uh, free market person myself I was kind of like well I don't necessarily like, like the idea of the government giving money to businesses and particularly when there's a lot of strings attached but at the same time there was I mean it's it's part of the takings clause right there there's the idea that the government can't take things from you without due process without giving you something in in return right it's this kind of there's a piece of the supremacy clause that has um, the kind of imminent domain has that same thing where they can take your property, they can force you to shut down, but they have to compensate you for doing so. So I kind of viewed that payroll protect, protection um, you know, money as a extension of that, which is perfectly reasonable, I think, in that regard. But one of the things that kind of early on came up was that there was a lot of big businesses that were taking the money. And a lot of people were very upset about that, right? How, how could these evil, large, big business corporations take all of this money from this program and leave a lot of the small businesses in the lurch? And there was definitely some merit to that, right? Because the money, the program ran out of money very quickly. And it got me thinking because it really, it brought up the same conversation that's happened over and over for a very long time in this country, which is this idea that big business is the bad guy. And it got me thinking, why is that? And I was thinking back to, because they didn't used to be that way, right? I mean, we used to look at big business as, the, as like the provider of jobs and as all of the, the kind of the, the engine of the economy. And I was thinking about when did this change? And it, it dawned on me a little bit as I was kind of thinking back and looking at it that media, movies, really do shape the way we think of things in many ways. And if you look at the cultural shift that has happened over the course of the end of the Cold War, so 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, and into the early 2000s, what you end up seeing is you end up seeing that in movies, the bad guys, right, the people that are the bad actors, have shifted from being um, the Russians or the Chinese or the, you know, they've, they've shifted from being, um, you know, nationalities, right? We, we don't like those guys because of their nationality. And it has shifted to um, some sort of corporate raider or some sort of big business, you know, espionage team or some sort of, um, you know, it, it's 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 kind of shifted where the bad guys are no longer, you know, nationalities and are now big businesses. And it got me thinking, right? It was like in, in these corporations, right? Those are the bad guys. Big corporations are the bad guys. And it got me thinking about why, um, why did that happen? And I think part of it is because there was this shift reasonably so away from kind of true nationalism after the cold war right during the cold war all the way up i think through the kind of the beginning of the cold war there was this genuine sense of you know us versus them americans versus the russians ussr versus you know that communism versus capitalism there was a very kind of real nationalistic kind of attitude towards that and then there was a shift 
away from that kind of nationalism. And I think if you look at what happened in the early 2000s and, and a lot of that, and then kind of after that and into the early uh, 2010s, you start to see a shift away from nationalism and national pride, right? Like America is good, the best, right? We're Americans. And you see this push towards kind of this globalism. And the problem is, is globalism is is in many ways very antithetical to the core of nationalism. They're kind of the opposite sides of the coin. And so you saw a lot of media kind of portray well, they needed a new bad guy, right? So they started to portray corporations as these bad, bad actors. And I think it's also, there was a time as well in this where a lot of corporations began to, because of the um, Citizens United case, a lot of being able to contribute more heavily to political campaigns and things along those lines. And so my generation, right, the people born in the early 90s and grew up and, and spent most of our kind of our formative middle school, high school, childhood years in those early 2000s into the early uh, 2010s, we spent a lot of time consuming media and consuming um, and living in a time where a lot of the idea was that big business was the bad guys. And if you look at the 2008 financial crash, obviously there was a lot of reasons that led to that. There were a lot of things, but um, mismanagement, corporate mismanagement was a big aspect of that failure. And so we kind of had that as a lot of our attitudes, right? A lot of that, a lot of that was built into the, the culture, you know, that was the, the cultural ennui as we grew up. And I think it's been, it's done a disservice to us because I think we, we now are a generation where we look at business as the bad guy, right? That these big corporations are ruining all these other things rather than realizing that corporations, big and small, are the engine of success of this country, right? The government doesn't do anything. And so a lot of the attitude kind of has shifted from kind of this pro-business to pro-government. And you see that this idea that we, through government intervention, through government, things can kind of, kind of curb, I guess, humanity. And, and there is truth to that, that, that the government's supremacy does allow it to curb human activity in ways, both good and bad. And when you look at the challenges that it really structures, that we've created an environment where people look at people like Jeff Bezos, right, who are these incredibly wealthy individuals and who have built these massive business empires as, you know, these bad guys, these corporate, you know, villains. And you see that with people like Bill Gates, you know, and, and other massive, um, massive, massively wealthy individuals. And many of these individuals attained that, that wealth through in many ways innovation and and we forget that right we look at these these businesses and we say oh these big businesses they're horrible without realizing that the reason why they're big is because we voted for them right the the value of capitalism and it's in its heart is that it allows for you to vote for whoever you want every day all day long with your money when you decide to spend your money on amazon you're voting for them right when you spend your money on Walmart, you're voting for them. It's not as simple as checking a box, right? So it's not quite as, it's not as obvious as like voting in elections, but it is voting, right? You're choosing to support them. And the reason why you're choosing to support them is because in that moment, for better or worse, you feel that they're providing the better solution. And that's good, right? That inherently, that, that microactivity is good. That you say, you know what? I think... I'm going to buy this thing off Amazon because I like the price. I like the speed at which it's going to get to me. I mean, I'm not telling you exactly what your cost benefit analysis is, but you're doing an analysis, right? You're saying I'm, I'm buying this thing for a reason. And when you buy things from us, right, you're buying things for a reason, right? For whatever reason. And there are a plethora of reasons, you know, either it's the, the, the way the product looks, it's the way the product is, it's durability from us, or it's, it's, um, you like the idea of supporting a small business or you like the supporting uh, the made in USA or you, you see that compared to our competitors in, in kind of the equivalent markets were very well priced, right? Whatever your reasoning is for that in that moment, you're making a decision to, to go with us, to vote for us. And that's very democratic. It's very naturally democratic. And another piece of this that I think is an important puzzle is that I can't force you to vote for me. Right. I can't make you spend your money on my at my company. I really wish I could. It was it would be really great if I could just be like, you know what? You have to. But I can't force you to. I have to convince you. And for everyone out there who believes that, you know, social media advertising can wildly sway anything, anybody, 
they obviously haven't spent a lot of time and spent a lot of money doing it. Because as someone who spent a lot of money and a lot of time really, really, really working hard at making people and convincing people to vote for us with our money or spend our money on us, it's, it's tricky. It's difficult. It's a hard sell. So when you look at the dynamic of businesses versus, in many ways, government, which is the classic kind of dynamic, right? It's, it's either the government does something or the businesses provide something. When you look at services, right, public versus private, we need to recognize that one of the big advantages of the private industry and the private, private system is that it allows for a very rapid and dynamic change, right? Businesses like mine can spring up overnight and can make big waves and can do big innovations, right? Disruptive innovation is, is, the, is like the, the cultural code of, of the capitalistic system, right? It's, it's we want to push innovation because whoever has got the next best thing, they're going to get your vote. They're going to get your money, right? So there's always a constant push. That's good. And, and that allows for a dynamic change in the market that leads to better value for everyone, right? By people cr- coming up with new things, they end up creating a more, a, a better system, and Amazon is a classic example of a way to do that, right? They took something, shopping, and shopping at a variety of stores, and they've said, you know what, we can make that instantaneous from every device you own, anywhere you're at, and we, it can show up at your doorstep with excellent tracking in two days, right? That's, that's a very real, tangible innovation that makes things different, makes things better. So when we look at that advantage, it's, it's, that's key, because that allows for the allocation of resources, which is essentially what economics is. It allows for the allocation of resources to be dynamic, changing, quick. It also inherently, and some people disagree with this, but it also inherently is far more um, fair. People say that's how can it be fair, right? It's far more fair because you have to, you have to choose and you get to choose and your choice with your money matters very much so every day. Actually, it matters probably more so in some ways than your physical vote. So that's good. The final, in my opinion, and there's a lot more than this, but the, the most important final kind of piece of this is that the government doesn't have to convince you of anything. The government has to coerce you, right? The government can force you to do things at some level at gunpoint, right? The government can force you to pay taxes. The government can force you to have insurance, right? It, the government is, it doesn't have to convince you that it's a good idea. They have to make you do it. And a lot of times, while it's not necessarily always thought of in this way, it is at gunpoint, essentially. If you don't follow the law, follow the rules, they'll tax you and they'll fine you. And then eventually, if you don't pay your fines, they'll come take you away. And if you don't want to comply, they'll point guns at you. Like this, this is the point. It's like it, they are forcing you. I don't have an option to do that as a company. I can't make you do anything. All I can do is, is convince you. I, it's, it's on me to, to continuously do my best to prove to you that buying our things will be better than you not buying our things. And that's a hard sell. That's like a hard thing to do. And it gets good for me. It's good for me to have to do that because you as a discerning buyer are the one with all the power to some extent. And there is some people who say, for example, well, what about environments where there are not other options, right? Where there's no competition. And it is true that there are times and there are places where competition is scarce. And that can leave people with few options. But the beauty of the market is that anywhere that there are few options and there is too much power going to the companies and the companies decide to use that to raise prices, for example, Competitors, all of a sudden, there's a lot more profit. And when there's profit, that incentivizes other companies, smaller business, innovative businesses to dive into those markets, right? People always kind of say, well, you know, for example, like internet service providers, this was a big, obviously, discussion not that long ago. But, you know, what if I, this is the only internet service provider? Spectrum, for example, right now in my location is the only company that provides internet to this particular area because we're kind of out in the middle of nowhere. And, you know, am I unhappy with my Spectrum service? Yeah, and so I called them and negotiated a little bit because you can do that. And do I have a lot of other options? Not really, not yet, but there are some new ones. I think Elon Musk, who are working on making internet available via the satellite network, right? Via space. As soon as that is available, very shortly potentially, will, that get my, will they get my money? Very likely. And so that's where you look at innovation and any, any opportunity for disruptive innovation is good. Because it creates 
new value from nothing. That's the thing. It creates more value out of, out of thin air. And that's why the pie continuously grows. And that's what we've seen. We've seen the wealth of the country just continuously grow over time. So when we look at, so, so when you're sitting there thinking to yourself, oh, that stupid corporation, they're so bad. Acknowledge that part of the reason that they got there and, and that you, you have to obviously potentially do your research to kind of show this in your own head. But the reason why they got there is because they were able to create something that was better than anybody else. And they were able to convince enough people to believe them that that was better than anyone else. And then they continuously had to prove that because it, particularly in the world of the Internet, if they had lied about it, if they had said this product is going to do all of these things and it didn't, people would tell the world and they would leave bad reviews. And they do believe bad reviews. And that's how, and that's really the reason why I think to some extent that a lot of businesses, particularly small and big businesses, are the good guys. They're the ones that are working to create more value every day because they have to. They're working on generating new ideas and creating more value for you as the customer. They are working on convincing and engaging with you as the customer to create the next best thing. And they have to do that all day long, every day, because if they don't, someone else is going to beat them to it. And that's why I think business is the good guy. Obviously, I mean, I encourage discussion and uh, feel free to, to leave comments and discuss with me because I, I, I think that there's obviously people who have differing opinions. And I'm not necessarily saying they're wrong, but, um, you know, I, I look forward to, to seeing that. For those of you who are out there, this is my only last little message. For those of you who are out there who are struggling as a small business owner, or a big business owner. I'm not, you know, I don't discriminate. For those of you who are out there who are struggling because you've gotten a lot of hate for whatever reason, for being a business owner, right? For for doing that. You've gotten a lot of hate for decisions you've made. Hang in there. Because it'll get better. It really will. And it's through you as the business owner and as the job creators that the country moves forward. It's the how you it's through you, it's through your activities and your building that people are able to have homes and feed children and all these other good things. So stick with it and don't feed the trolls. All right. Thank you guys for tuning in today. Be sure to check back in um, for our next uh, topic on Thursday. We're going to try to keep doing it on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but uh, be sure to check that subscribe button and the alert button to be notified when we put out new episodes because I may not always be as reliable as I'd like it to be. So be sure to check back in, but definitely, definitely subscribe to those alerts. If you have any questions or concerns about your leather binder, journal, folio, mask, anything at all that we sell, feel free to reach out to us on the main page of our website at murdycreative.co or you can contact us via our Instagram and Facebook. You can text, call, email, direct message, all the usual. I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible, but we do appreciate your patience um, and we're working on bringing them some more customer service help. So hopefully we'll be able to have better and quicker responses to everything. If you think I deserve it, a good review can go a long way to help us grow our new community. Uh, you can leave a review on the podcast app that you're listening on. I do love those. I do read those. You know, it's it helps. It really does. Um, but also tell your friends. That's that's really important. Word of mouth is a, is a really huge form of advertising. Tell them about the podcast. You can also leave a review and tell your friends about the product. Go check out MurdyCreative.co on Facebook. So it's Facebook.com slash MurdyCreative.co or you can type it in the search bar. On the left side of the page, there's a reviews section. You can click reviews. There's a do you recommend the Murdy Creative Co- question you click yes and then you can write your review or you can read all of the other reviews that we've got they're very encouraging they were wonderful and i really appreciate all of those so do tell your friends though word of mouth is a huge part of how we grow our little community if you have any podcast topics you want to hear more about send them my way i'm always happy to engage with our growing community and i want to i want to talk more about what you guys want so feel free to shoot me messages either on the contact form on our website via direct message on on instagram or facebook or any of those things um send them to me and I, i really will take a look at them uh, if you're looking for multiple binders, follow those anything we sell, uh, for gifts, giveaways, menus, really any reason, ask about a bulk discounts. They start at five. Quantity five is the is the minimum quantity for our bulk discounts, and they go up from there. So uh, if you're looking for that kind of stuff, check it out. Ask about that. Send us an email saying, hey, I'm looking for the bulk discount. This is what I'm looking to order, uh, and we'll be happy to, to get you that set up. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. Have a great day, and goodbye.